the Chinese weightlifting president will run for the IWF president. Weightlifting scores an own goal and another weightlifting meme review. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House news show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. Now for all you Masters lifters out there, before I forget to mention it, qualification for the World Masters online competition has been extended to February 15th. The competition is May 2021. So let's get into some of this strange new doping rule stuff and then the IWF president stuff that we need to talk about. So there are new doping rules that have been made by Dr. Rani, the, the current, the, the acting president of the IWF. And it's a little bit weird. It seems like he and those on the board tried to try to slip these changes to the doping rules past the federations by simply just posting the, the piece of paper with it all on on the IWF website, but not sending out emails to the member federations to explain these these changes. It's sort of akin to trying to announce something to to a university by sticking up a piece of paper on the announcement board and not mentioning anywhere else via email. So the rules seem to have loosened up slightly. Here's one of them. Initially, it used to be that nations with, with three or more doping violations in, in a certain period would be fined up to 500,000 US dollars. Now it's, it's four athletes per country, not three. So you, you, you don't get that fine if you've just got three, because that's okay for some reason. And the fine is no longer 500,000, it's dropped down to 300,000, which is nice for those countries who, who dope. Next, it seems like they're trying to once again separate the responsibility from the athlete who dopes with the country that has facilitated or allowed that doping. It used to be, and, and this is the actual quote in the, uh, in, the, in the rules, that countries would be liable for the conduct of their affiliated athletes. Now it says that they should be taken into account the degree of fault or negligence of the member federation. And we know that it doesn't work if you just pop the athletes. If there's a coach, let's take uh, the late Ivan Abijev, for example. If there's a coach and every athlete that passes by him gets popped for drugs, it doesn't help if you just remove those athletes. You have to go to the source, which is the coach. Then you have to go to uh, the source beyond that, which is the federation. And punishing that federation is what needs to be done. And removing or abdicating the responsibility between athlete popped and, and country that oversees the athlete seems like a route to to once again just allow uh, this this culture of doping and weightlifting. The national boards will receive less punishment and, and the individual doping athlete will receive more of the blame. Phil Andrews, the, the CEO of USA Weightlifting, described it as an own goal for weightlifting, saying that it seems the, and I quote, board appear not to have the interests of the clean athlete at heart. They have made one change that seems somewhat beneficial, uh, and that is uh, the, the number of bands in a year uh, for which uh, a country gets fined is now in a 12 month period rather than a calendar year. So it used to be that, you know, say you had two bands uh, from May until December, and then a third band in January, that didn't count as three bands in a year because the January one was a second calendar year. Now that would count because all three fit into a 12 month period. So there's there's some improvement there. Dr. Mike Arani, the, the current IWF president, seems to think that the IWF is the shining light of doping rules to other sports. He actually referred to the IWF as, and again, I quote, a leader for some time when it comes to anti-doping, furthering the, the new rules reflect uh, reflect just that. He also made claims that these changes to the rules are stronger, fairer, and more enforceable. This seems ridiculous. You can read more about this whole story from Brian Oliver at Inside the Games. You can check out my interview with Brian as well on the Weightlifting House podcast. So as you all know, possibly, as some of you know, there are going to be new elections for, for the president of the IWF. The way it works essentially is that one country that has a, uh, a governing body for weightlifting has a vote. So if you're from a country where there's there's one weightlifter, but you have a federation, uh, or if you're from China, where you've got an enormous federation, both countries just got one vote. And this in the past has led to problems because, of course, you can very easily bribe these smaller countries by giving them uh, uh, coaching education money, 
you know, um, to help them develop as long as they vote for the right person. It's always been a little bit weird like that. But Dr. Irani will be running as a candidate for the permanent president selected uh, in March. This seems like a poor idea to me. Ex-interim president Ursula Papandrea will be running again. She's going to be building her campaign around fighting corruption in sport, denouncing the, the toxic culture of corruption on today's board, she said. And uh, she sounds like a much better <laughs> vote. And then out of left field, we have Zhu Jiang Quang, president of the Chinese Weightlifting Association, who is going to be running for the IWF president. So as well as, as his support for clean lifting and an improved governance of the, of the sport, his main pledge, which is kind of backed by his previous commercial successes in, in business and with the Chinese weightlifting team, will be in bringing in new income streams for the sport. So that's going to be through sponsorships, advertising and licensing. Now, this is really interesting. He wants to essentially reform broadcasting and licensing, which would be exciting for, for well, companies like us who perhaps would want to use uh, want to use footage from competitions, would want to provide um, our own sort of private commentary for competitions. That sort of stuff is interesting as well. Just when you see how much money he's brought into the Chinese Weightlifting Federation, I think it was somewhere close to around five million US dollars last year. And that's through his sponsorships with with Anta, for example, and other companies. Uh, it kind of makes you realize that he might end up bringing in a lot more money for the sport. What's also interesting is that China has essentially had no representation on the board for a long time, despite being the by far and away the most successful weightlifting country in the world, and, and probably, though I'd have to check, the largest too. And in China, it's technically, and technically uh, a criminal offence to dope in sport. And actually, since since Zhu Jinquang has become the Chinese president of, of the Weightlifting Federation, China has had zero doping charges, and that's since 2017. And that, of course, is reflected in the fact that they can send eight athletes to the Olympic Games. So it's going to be an interesting race. I think we're going to see it falling, like I've said, between the new Zhu Zhang Quang, who wants to sort of commercialize weightlifting, help bring a better brand and reputation to the sport, and then monetize that for, for future successes. And then... Ursa Papandrea, who we know is, is very strong, she has a, um, a sort of a goal of how, how the sport should look in terms of how fair it is for, for all participants. And I can see these two being the two front runners for, for the next president. But, but of course, we will, uh, we will see what's, what, what happens with that. Next, for those of you who have been sending me articles over the last week saying that Japan has secretly announced that Tokyo Olympics uh, has been cancelled, um, this doesn't seem true. Now, that's not to say that it's not going to be cancelled. I think it would be foolish to 100% to bet on, on either way. Uh, but Japan certainly hasn't said anything like that. In fact, in an official statement from the IOC, they said that the Japanese government said that this so-called report is categorically untrue. To quote, the IOC is fully concentrated on and committed to the successful delivery of the Olympic and Paralympic Games this year. Obviously, the amount of money that might be lost from Japan if they do the Olympics this year, as opposed to in 2032, when the next slot is available for them, uh, probably will contribute to some extent to, to this decision. However, a, a full Olympic Games just without an audience um, seems seems like a possibility at this point and, uh, and one that I, I think they're, they're heading towards if things continue to get worse. Uh, then of course they won't. But right now, I believe that that is that is the goal for Tokyo 2020. And yes, it is still called 2020, even though it'll be in 2021. The branding is Tokyo 2020. Also, just to clear something up very quickly before we get into some of the big lifts. Last week, I, I mentioned a weightlifter and said that they're from Indonesia. They were actually from India. And I got a lot of hate in the comments for that. Uh, the reason that happened, I, I, I apologize for that one, is the country code, the IOC country code is IND. And when I went through the results, I saw his name, I saw IND, and for some reason I just went Indonesia. Uh, not quite sure why I didn't go India, but I didn't, so apologies there. Over to China now, Lu Zhaojun, the goat, the king, the man who may well get his third Olympic gold medal uh, in 2021 if the Olympics goes ahead, and of course if Rahimov is indeed banned and removed from his performance in 2016 in Rio, uh, just hit 160 in the snatch and then 165 in the snatch. 
and he looks pretty good. He doesn't look like he's you know going to snatch 180 anytime soon like he did uh, many years ago. However, the 165 was nice. He caught it quite far back, uh, but he's got strength in his shoulders and he was able to stand that bad boy up quite nicely. From South Korea, Jin Yun Song, uh, who I think must have been watching the Weightlifting House video of uh, Red on Minushi block snatch 185, has also just block snatched 185. Uh, he won gold in the 102 kilo class in the snatch with 181 kilos back in 2019, missed 183 on his third attempt. But this 185 is the most we've ever seen from him in any variation of, of the snatch, so that's very exciting for him. Uzbekistan's Ruslan Nuradinov just hit a triple in the block snatch at 160 kilos. Now in competition we've seen him put the green on once, maybe twice, 195-ish kilos. In fact, I believe he's hit 196 at his best in competition. In training, 205 is the most we've seen from him. The hello yellow, three slabs of yellow and some collars. Uh, so this somewhere just shy of 80% of his best but for a triple off blocks. Over in Belarus, I thought I would just bring this bit of news up because it's interesting to see uh, how the mighty do indeed fall. Andrei Romnow in his patented green t-shirt that he always wears, uh, 109 kilo weightlifter, the 2008 Olympic champion, the um, 2019 world silver champion. He has just uh, hit a clean and jerk at 185 kilos and it looked very tough. I think prior to that, he did 170 for a 1 plus 1 plus 1, chucked in the front squat. He did back squat 260 for a triple, which is decent. But um, considering that this guy has hit 240 kilos, uh, in fact, over 240 kilos in training as a 105, uh, 233 in competition, an Olympic record, junior world record at the time, uh, 185 is, is a pretty stark lift for him to hit right now, especially considering, I mean, he snatched, uh, what was it, 14 kilos more than this for a world record just over a year ago. So um, it's totally plausible that he's just out of shape massively, but it's also possible that the the current pressures that be within the IWF and doping are finally taking their toll on, on some of these lifters. In Latvia, we have 81 kilo Ritva Suharevs. He hit 210 kilo clean and almost made the jerk. He's weighing 83.5 kilos. We've seen him now hit an unofficial world record in the clean and jerk in training. He did that last week or the week before. He snatched 170 off blocks and now this 210 clean. He actually said that he hit this same weight for a clean last year. I have no memory of that, and I'm not denying that he did it. He knows better than I, but I was surprised uh, to see that he'd written that on the comment, uh, but I guess we have to believe it. He's, he's pleased just by the fact that last year he could clean it. He says this year he could attempt to clean and jerk it, which um, not quite sure why he can attempt to jerk last year, but even so, 210, uh, amazing lift for, for Rivas. Over to Denmark, we have the People's Viking, aka Katrin Bruun, 55 kilo weightlifter, who posted a video of a back squat triple at 128 kilos, which is very strong for her. Uh, one of the reasons I also thought I'd mention this is that she wanted to put a happy spin on the current motif that goes around the weightlifting world, which is all about heavy squats and heavy feels and, and feeling bad with your squats and all that sort of stuff. And she basically said that she had heavy squats and she felt happy. And uh, she put a nice spin on it, so she deserves a mention there. Moldova's Roby Marin, the 73 kilo weightlifter, once again is doing amazing things. And I think to some extent he's actually spurred on by the um, by the audience that he's gaining through Weightlifting House because he, he watches and posts whenever we talk about him and he's gained a bunch of followers from it. So I'm kind of keen, uh, pleased about that. 240 kilos for a triple in the deadlift, which is great. But then 162 kilo snatch. I mean, he's a 73 kilo weightlifter. The world record's 168 by Shizi Yong. And I know I said this before, but side by side, these are two different physical specimens. I mean, Shizi Yong is yoked, and Robin Marin is just, he's hes almost like the uh, the modern day Hisen Palaku with the way that he pulls knee valgus, knees knocking together, uh, broken, barely gets any height or, or speed on the bar and still manages to make it. It's really quite impressive. He then also hit 180 kilos for a clean front squat jerk. The front squat, of course, to parallel because he has mobility issues, which is just makes this even more remarkable. And then 190 for a clean and jerk. Again, he's, what, nine kilos under the world record here. The clean, tough. The jerk, not so tough. Amazing back knee gets under the bar. Really pings off the shoulders. So um, continuing to be one to watch for, for, well, he won't be at this Olympics, it's a shame, but 2024 Paris. 
Over in Italy now, 64 kilo Giorgia Bourdignon finally posted a lift. You haven't seen anything from her in a few weeks. 120 kilos in the clean and jerk, looking incredibly easy, looking very comfortable. She's going to be holding either the continental slot, I would have thought, for the Olympics, or maybe be in the top eight. Kind of depends uh, which athletes accept and don't accept their placements uh, for Tokyo. However, I do think that she will be there representing Italy. Over in Spain, we have Lydia Valentin, one of the most um, decorated weightlifters ever, actually. I know she gets a bit of stick from people at the moment. People say that she, she deserves or she gets she gets more attention than she deserves. She's been winning uh, competitions for, you know, a decade and a half at this point. She's got multiple world medals, multiple European medals, multiple Olympic medals. Um, she's one of the most impressive weightlifters who have ever come out of Europe. In fact, she's in... Uh, the 2021 weightlifting house calendar let me just find the picture here Lydia Valentin and um, in fact I've, we've got a few things here so gold at the London 2012 Olympic Games two world championships four European championships and a bunch of other medals so that's pretty impressive you can grab this at weightliftinghouse.com uh, and she just hit 115 kilos in the jerk which again this isn't a big lift she's she snatched more than this in fact I think in Almaty 2014 she snatched I want to say 124, which is kind of remarkable. But even so, we haven't seen her lift anything in a while. She's such a legend of the sport that I figured if she does anything lifty, uh, we might as well mention it. Next, we're going to move up north to Great Britain. We have the barbell queen, Sarah Davies, 64 kilo weightlifter, who last week um, I mentioned the fact that she, she, she hit a double at 97 kilos on the snatch, which was amazing. This week she hit 101 kilos off the blocks for a single and even attempted it for a double and it was pretty close. And 101 kilos is equal to the most she's ever snatched. Um, 101 kilos is the most that she's ever hit in competition. I don't think she's ever been that in training either. So amazing to be hitting it so effortlessly and to then be attempting it for a second repetition. Next, and sticking with Great Britain, we have 67 kilo Rooney Siraj, who just hit 155 kilos for a block clean PR, which is huge when you think about it because it's, uh, well, it's over double body weight, which is a big moment for anyone. I don't know how much he weighed. Admittedly, he could have been 69 kilos and he'd be uh, two, three kilos shy of, uh, of a double body weight. But even so, let's, let's call him 67. This is a over two times body weight clean off blocks. Across the Atlantic to Canada, it's Bodhi Champ. 225 kilo behind the neck jerk for Bodhi Santavi, 96 kilo weightlifter. He will, of course, be going to Tokyo if Tokyo is on. And he will, I would have thought, be, uh, well, he's certainly looking to place for a medal. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up taking a bronze, um, maybe a silver. You never know. He's going to have to push the cleaner jerk. But this jerk looks fantastic. Uh, he's always been pretty strong overhead. Uh, power jerking 200 kilos for triples that sort of thing which is just crazy um, so a nice lift for for Bodhi here and then finally and I told you this was a short one we have from the USA Kaiser Witt super heavyweight 180 kilo snatch and training no straps uh, 10 kilos under the most we've ever seen from him it's been a long time since he's he's actually hit that 190 still waiting on the 200 I feel like he's a guy who could do it but 180 looked pretty good so um, nice lift there for Kaiser Okay, so it is time now to uh, head over to the 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 meme review, the weightlifting house meme review. I've got a list of them here. I haven't looked at them yet. I mean, I may well have seen them uh, through the last week of scrolling on Instagram, but I don't know what they are. Uh, guys, don't forget, head over to weightliftinghouse.com. You can sign up for the coaches only conference. Eight of the most influential, amazing speakers in weightlifting, delivering uh, plan targeted lectures at you and also giving you the the option the possibility of, of asking them questions and getting their feedback on various things that's february 27th to 28th you can book your ticket now it's 149 dollars for the two days uh that price is going to go up in a couple of weeks to 200 dollars. you can also get individual day passes if you want to just buy one of them uh the link is down below okay so as i've mentioned before the meme review i think uh shows the the general thought of, of weightlifting, things that people don't always want to say. But if a meme does well, it means that it resonates 
uh, with with the people of weightlifting. So we got to know what the people think. Okay, meme number one we have. Okay, so I have seen this meme. I actually think this is hilarious. This is posted by Stankle underscore memes, and it's uh, weightlifting house and hook grip shaking hands through their flies. Uh, for those of you who are listening on the podcast, with the caption "pow." Now I will be honest. Um, Nat and I get on whenever we've been able to to see or speak to each other. Uh, however, I think the 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 creation of pow from him and then my projection of this new word into the weightlifting stratosphere has been one of the greatest collaborations that has been seen in weightlifting. So I'm a huge fan of this meme from from Stankel underscore memes. In fact, I think that's going to be hard to top. We'll go to we'll go to meme number two. This one by Bolo underscore Swaggins. Class, this is the only equation you're ever going to need. Everything else is just nerd. 1 kg equals 2.2 pounds. I must say that I've got quite good mental maths, and I, I imagine that part of it is from constant changing of weights uh, from pounds to kilos. Fortunately, now most Americans actually do just use kilos in weightlifting, which is great. But for some time, I was uh, I was a bit of a mental uh, calculator with the old 1 kg to 2.2 pounds uh, that I had to go through. Meme 3. Olympic weightlifters, when they take a gold medal, then lose it years later from new doping tests. And it's... Uh, oh, okay. Let's turn that down. Uh, <laughs> it's KSI getting very angry about something in his bedroom. Um... Apologies for the words that came out there. Hopefully they get bleeped. In fact, Alex, if you could bleep those, I don't want to offend and I also don't want to get zero ad revenue on this video. Um, humorous, I suppose. Okay, next it's training make and it's me. Okay, and uh, what have we got? We've got Zach Tallender as Patrick and we have Coach Ma and Wu Lifts. What does this say above Homer? Me, after reading a few pages of Mars Strength, Chinese weight. Is it suggesting that I am the person behind all of this? Oh, okay, I see the caption. I think we all know who pulls the strings. I truly don't own or run any of these meme companies. It's funny that perhaps there's a conspiracy that I do, um, but I really don't. But um, Coach Ma, uh, if you're watching, I apologize if you think it was me that made fun of your book. I have read your book. It is very good. Next, when you hear the Olympics might be cancelled and realise you won't ever see Lu Zhaozhen complete or compete in the Olympics again. All right, let's refresh this so I can hear it. All right, you know what? We're going to need more beeping on this one, Alex, because that is just unacceptable for a family-friendly show like this. Let's move on. We have uh, weightlifting Ds. That's a good throwback. So you see, that's where the trouble began, and it's a picture of Mezzo, that smile, that damned smile. I'll be honest, Mezzo does have a smile that just warms the cockles of your heart. Uh, you can't you can't say no to that face, and um, no doubt when I first saw it in 2016, when he held that 205 overhead, that that too, just like with the woman in here, was uh, where the trouble began for me also. Okay, next we have, um, and there's a comment before it that says, not a meme, but trending in the meme economy. Could be good to get Seb's opinion. If too hot, then drop. Okay, so it's, um, oh yeah, okay, so this is the video from Dr. Joel Seedman, who I know very little about, except that he coaches a, a lot of decent athletes, I believe. Um, and this guy is doing a trap bar hip power snap, hip muscle snatch. Which is, um, I mean, it looks ridiculous to me. I actually wrote a comment on this post. So I'm just going to read the comment uh, if if I can find it. Oh, Jesus, there's over 600 comments on here. I may not be able to find my comment. Okay, I finally found it. I said, there are so many things wrong with this, it's hard to start. Suggesting the need for more of an anti-posterior force vector in favor of vertical motion is just flat out wrong, which it is. Coaches spend so much of their time trying to force their athletes to actually not extend too far with the hips and to finish vertically through a stronger extension of the quads, uh, only to have this guy say that we need more anti-posterior force in the finish is uh, doing a huge disservice to weightlifters. I then, however, did caveat in my caveating ways by saying, with that said, he isn't coaching weightlifters, so improving hip extension at the cost of snatch mechanics is probably fine for his athletes, because realistically, 
if if he gives them exercises that makes them snatch and clean technically worse, it just sort of doesn't matter. Like he coaches throwers and and jumpers, I assume, um, and so it's just not probably not that big a deal. They would probably be able to produce more force if they weren't um, doing hip muscle snatches with a trap bar. Uh, however, that's his prerogative. So as long as weightlifting coaches don't try and do it, and as long as he doesn't suggest that weightlifters ought to do it then I kind of don't care what circus type stuff he comes up with. Uh, but in general, I don't really like what he does. Okay, that's the end of this week's uh, meme review. I'm going to give the meme crown to Stankle Lifts. Stankle Lifts also is the guy behind the... Um, but he, he was an inspiration for this book, actually. Um, he's not in it. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's a decent weightlifter. Um, but uh, he gave me the idea to go through and count down some of the best weightlifters that turned into the podcast then that turned into the book. So that's pretty cool. So shout out to Stankle Memes. Okay, the people's lifts. We have a few lifters and uh, we have some amazing lifts. We're going to start out with uh, probably the most impressive by Maddie Stazen Staniszewski. Maddie Staniszewski. I'll spell that afterwards. Uh, she's 20 years old and she only weighs 60 kilos and she just squat jerked 115 kilos. So closing in on double body weight, I think she is a squat jerker rather than uh, rather than a split jerker anyway. Uh, she, she hit 110 kilos back in August, so it's been a 5 kilo PR in just the last few months, which is insane. Uh, and the mobility and strength required to hit 115 at 60 kilos in body weight is, is utterly ridiculous. So uh, I'm just completely blown away by this, honestly. So uh, guys, go follow Maddie at M-A-D-D-I-E period. S T A N I S Z E W S K I Staniszewski. Next, we have Ryan Krauser, who is actually an, an Olympic champion, so kind of shouldn't be in this section of the show. Uh, R Krauser on Instagram, 140 kilo hip power snatch. Uh, he's a thrower, by the way, he's a shot putter. Hip power snatch, just so incredibly fast. Uh, he moved the barbell with a velocity of 2.67 meters per second at its peak, peak velocity, which is very, very fast. Uh, 140 kilo hit power from him. I'm just excited to see what other madness he does in this off-season period. Next, we have Mandy Murakami, who didn't actually post this to be uh, mentioned, I don't think, on the show. It's, uh, it's a slow dip jerk, 75 kilos, and it is really nice, and the position in the split is great. But one of the reasons I wanted to mention it as well is uh, because the bars and the plates in the background... Uh, are all weightlifting house bars and plates and there are so many of them uh, and it looks really cool so I wanted to highlight that. Speaking of which I want to do a big shout out to Moran Academy, M-O-R-A-N period Academy on Instagram, amazing weightlifting gym uh, and actually where uh, yeah, a few people who I've mentioned on the podcast before train. Anyway just a huge thank you for them for helping receive and, and ship and, and label up uh, so many sets of plates uh, and bars, over 10 kilos 10 kilos over 10 tons worth of equipment went through and out the, uh, their doors uh, over the last weekend so uh, big shout out to uh, to Moran Academy. Next we have uh, a post by Isaac DLC 9.4 no idea what that means 222 kilo front squat which is amazing and uh, he then tagged the people's gym and I was like, oh, that sounds very much like the people's lifts, the voice of the people, the people scientists, the, the weightlifting house theme that I've used for the last three years. And uh, I go on it, and uh, it, indeed it is. I think it's Cornell's, um, Cornell George? Yeah, Cornell George's gym. Uh, he's got the, the home of weightlifters, weightlifting house flag there, which is pretty sick. And uh, it's just an amazing gym, and a bunch of people train there. So two birds with one stone. Uh, Isaac... DLC 9.4 on Instagram with a 222 front squat and then also the people's gym on Instagram. Okay, three more because there were just so many great lifts. I'll go through these ones a bit quicker. We have Alejandro Medina, who is just, you know, if you've been following him, his last six months have been unlike no others. 150 kilo power snatch, filthy. Then we have the freak of all freaks, 89 kilo, the James Townsend on Instagram, 190 kilo power clean, which, I mean, can you imagine doing a it's more than two times body weight. It's about uh, it's about 2.12, 2.13 uh, times body weight probably. 190 kilo power clean is just filthy at 89. And then lastly, we're going to go to uh, Eva or Ava, I'm not sure, Ever maybe even, underscore Johnston, E-V-A underscore J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N, 
300 pound snatch PR, that's 136 kilos. That's a big milestone for, for any weightlifter. I think if you're not in the USA, it's not because you just would never think I want to go for 136 because you just don't care about pounds. But in America, that's huge. Um, we've got 140, that's our bigger one. And obviously it is in America too, but uh, even so, 136, I recognize that over there, that's a big deal. And uh, well, I, I, I've never snatched 300 pounds, so you know, what do I know? All right, that is the end of this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. Um, bars and plates, if you've ordered them, they're shipped and they're on their way to you, or you've got them. I know a lot of people, in fact, most people have got them now. We have more in stock, but we're only basically letting people who have uh, put the name on the waiting list, we're giving them sort of first refusal um, to get through. So that probably won't actually be made public on the site this week because so many people have already said that they want to buy stuff. Then next month, February, we've got a load more. That stuff will be made public, I imagine, uh, depending on the size of the list that we have. Uh, so we have that stuff coming in. Uh, if you want to get this cool calendar or these cool thumb tapes or any books or straps or clothing or anything, head over to weightlifthouse.com and of course you can sign up for coaches only there. We appreciate you tuning in and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys all on another episode of the Weightlifting House News Show.